looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. It's a cybersecurity story. It's an algorithm story. It's a bias story. It's a geopolitical story. It was bizarre. Why would suddenly this kind of like fun little kids app become wrapped up in this huge geopolitical storm between the US and China that was only getting hotter? To me, this is bigger than TikTok. It's about who in our society gets hurt and what you have to do in our society to get hurt. That was a clip from TikTok Boom, a new documentary that examines the TikTok community and explores how the app became one of the most influential platforms of the contemporary social media landscape. Joining us today all the way from New York is the award-winning director of the film, Shalini Kuntaya. Welcome to the show, Shalini. Thanks so much for having me. We're so delighted to have you. And as the name suggests, TikTok Boom is a film about the most downloaded social media app. I'm curious, what made you decide to make a film about this particular platform? Well, I am a filmmaker who is fascinated by disruptive technologies. And during the pandemic, I started hearing about this app that was sort of best known for teenagers dancing, that was rapidly gaining uh, popularity with Generation Z. And when I began reading that this same app, best known for teenagers dancing and funny pranks, was being investigated in over 57 countries over issues of data collection, content moderation, and that Donald Trump was even threatening to ban the app in the United States, I became really interested and had to ask myself, how does a teenage dance app become the center of geopolitical controversy? Mm. And now you filmed this entirely during the pandemic. So talk about some of the challenges that you faced during the making of this film. Absolutely. TikTok Boom was shot in uh, five countries and 10 cities. And so a few of the international shoots had to be handled remotely. And I'm incredibly grateful to my team for adapting to new protocols and enabling us to deliver this film to you and keep everyone safe. Well, as you mentioned, it's an app, or was, that was best known for young people dancing and you know trying out trends. And then it became the target of so much controversy in geopolitics. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Absolutely. I think that TikTok is really the first app to challenge the dominance of Silicon Valley. TikTok is owned by ByteDance, which is a Chinese company. And I don't think we've ever had to grapple with what it means to have a global social media platform with millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people on it, actually 2 billion to be exact, um, that comes from a country that's not democratic and doesn't have democratic values. And I think that that poses new issues and questions around data collection and content moderation, and even national security in an age where the everyday things that we post online can be weaponized um, by governments. Mm. And, and I think, you know, what also played a role was mounting racism against and xenophobia against China and um, for the pandemic. And sort of we've seen that with, with anti-Asian violence all across the world. And I think that sort of created this perfect storm um, for this to happen in the last few years. So your, your film looks at many successful TikTok uh, influencers. So how did you go about uh, choosing who you were going to feature? Well, I cast a wide net. I think I, I know way too much about TikTok stars at this point. <laughs> I was looking at creators whose lives have really been changed by the platform. And I was looking for Gen Z influencers whose personal stories really dovetail with the larger um, themes in the film. And so you have, you know, Feroza Aziz, this high school student who was, um, you know, deplatformed after she posted something that critiqued Chinese uh, treatment of Uyghur Muslims, or Deja Fox, who uh, had to stop using the platform when TikTok got banned from government and army forms. Or Spencer X, who sort of represents the you know cataclysmic rise to stardom and has skyrocketed to success as a beatboxer because of TikTok. And being on the street with him filming was like being with George Clooney or with Brad Pitt. It was that level of, of fame that TikTok has brought to a new class of Gen Z celebrity. Mm. Well, and I so to me... Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I was just going to follow up on who these people are because you spend a lot of time with them. So... 
like, how do they use social media differently than people like from our generation, my generation? This cast of Gen Z influencers really inspired me because um, Gen Z are the first human beings that, that we call digital natives. They grew, they grew up on the internet and every generation after Gen Z will be a digital native. So what we're seeing is a seismic shift, I think, in, in human socialization. And I think what makes you know, sort of Gen Z different than maybe my generation is that they've never had a sense of privacy. I feel like I had the opportunity to be awkward and to make mistakes in private. And uh, this generation has really grown up online with no sense of privacy. And I think that is really uh, changing culture. Mm. Uh, you know, with TikTok, though, and, you know, with all social media platforms, there's this mysterious algorithm involved with TikTok's algorithm is especially mysterious. Could you tell us more about that? Absolutely. Many of these platforms use this black box algorithm. And I think what makes TikTok different is that it's a really powerful recommendation algorithm. And so it uses information about how long you're watching and, you know, data from your phone. And it's able to create almost a complete psychological profile of your interests, almost like a, a fingerprint of who you are. And you'll see after a few hours using it, it sort of learns who you are and begins to serve you up information. And so while others are, it's sort of like a social network looking for information, in TikTok, it's almost like information looking for people. And so it, it's a very powerful recommendation algorithm with a very powerful artificial intelligence at its center. Mm. I mean, we know the impact that social, or maybe we don't know enough about the impact that social media is having, although these conversations are happening. Um, but you do delve into the impact of social media on mental health. So what did you find out about this? I am incredibly troubled and um, concerned about the mental health crisis that Gen Z is having and even the latest reporting about the teenage mental health cri crisis and the impact that social media is having on that. And what is, I think, scary is that when we pass legislation you know, here in the US in the 90s that protected kids, it was because we had the research to support what it was doing to children. And what we're seeing is that big tech isn't giving us the data that would allow us to protect children. And we see that even with companies like Instagram and Facebook, where they knew that this was hurting teenage girls and causing um, increased instances of, of bulimia and eating disorders. It was making um, kids more anxious and depressed, even suicidal. And they had the reports and they hid them for two years. And so I think part of the issue that we're facing with social media is we don't have the research of how this is impacting a brain that's not fully formed, a human being that's not fully developed. And so it's almost like a massive uncontrolled experience experiment where we are unleashing the most powerful persuasive recommendation algorithms in the history of the world um, on um, young minds. And we, we don't yet understand uh, the full impact of what, what this is doing to mental health. And it's like advancing quickly. I mean, it's too late to put it back in the box right now. Now you are a tech fanatic. You're deeply invested and interested in all things related to tech. So there's gonna be another TikTok, I think, you know, that's been the pattern. So for you, what is the future of social media like going forward? Well, I think the tricky thing about these technologies is that they're, that are not only dystopian, they're utopian too. And so I think the big question is how do we get the benefits of these technologies without these harms? And I think TikTok is just the first app to sort of being in the crosshairs of being from a cu country outside of um, so, being outside of Silicon Valley to sort of pose these questions around content moderation and data collection. And I think what is happening is that legislation and literacy is not keeping pace with the scale of technological innovation. And so what we need is more literacy and more regulation that would enable us to have the benefits of these technologies without the harms. Mm. So despite doing this deep dive uh, on uh, TikTok and on social media, you stopped using that platform after making this film. Talk about why you decided to do that. 
uh, TikTok was eating my life. <laughs> I felt that within moments, I, I mean, within several days of me starting to use the platform, I was kind of in awe in how much the algorithm knew me and how much it knew my, my tastes and my interests and what would keep me on the platform. And I had an addictive experience that I've not had with any other social media platform. And for my own mental health and for the, the good of my career, I, I got off the platform. And so is that in part the reason that you wanted to make this film, that, that that's the impact you hope that this will have as maybe a warning? Well, you see countries like China are putting 40 minute limits on children's use of social media. And one of the things that I hope the film will do will educate the public so that we can make better decisions for ourselves about how to have healthier relationships to these technologies Shall and to protect our democratic values. And our children. <laughs> Shalini, thank and you. And our kids. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really great chatting with you. Thanks so much. It was an honor. Everyone watching the film is called TikTok Boom. It is screening at the 2022 Hot Docs International Documentary Film Festival here in Toronto. Be sure to check it out, and we'll be. Right back.